Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at Option Alpha, and we're knee deep in earnings season uh, this week. It's Wednesday. Uh, Apple had earnings. We have more earnings after the close, um, but uh, Apple was the real uh, headline catcher today, or sorry, yesterday after the close, when the company basically doubled in size in one year. So I think earnings quarter uh, uh, for the second quarter, year over year, were up 80 something percent plus. So Pretty impressive, um, considering that it's close to being the uh, the biggest company on the planet. Uh, it's trailing behind Exxon ever so slightly. I think it's seven or eight percent behind, but um, it's pretty impressive. As far as the market is concerned, uh, we're definitely in a tight range now. We've been range bound for the better half of five months now. Ever since really the middle part of February, we've just been kind of pinballing back and forth. On the chart here that I have up right now, this is the S&P 500, and you can see exactly what I was talking about. We've just been kind of ping-ponging back and forth ever since mid-February between, say, 1350 and 1260 on the S&P. So just moving back and forth. It's been very choppy. Um, if the market doesn't break out anyway here at the end of the year, it's going to be a pretty flat year for stocks. So um, not a lot happening. It's pretty hard to catch all of these little moves inside the market, uh, but it's definitely been a wild ride. Um, the thing with the S&P right now is that it has three pretty good levels that it's been moving back and forth between. And you can see on my chart here, I've highlighted those levels with these blue ovals where the market has bounced or used this area as resistance. Um, and namely here, I'll just highlight another one that I saw right here. So the S&P has been moving very nicely between these levels that I've already pre-drawn here. And in fact, the video update and, and charts that I had sent out to our members on our premium site had, uh, had alerted everyone that we could possibly see a bounce right here. And this was a couple days ago when we saw that long tail start to form on the S&P. And I'll just highlight it here a little bit. But that long tail start to form on the S&P. And it also hit this area that had previously acted as support and resistance. So it was pretty easy to see that something was happening there, that a lot of buyers were coming in. And then obviously yesterday we had a really big move higher, uh, followed by uh, a little bit of follow through today that kind of gave out at the end of the day. So I think short term, I think the market still continues to rally through the rest of earnings season. Um, it'll really depend on some of the bigger companies that come out later on this week and early next week. Once we get through those companies, then the rest of the earnings are, are pretty standard for the most part. Just a lot of earnings every day, obviously. We're really knee-deep in it. But again, most of these companies uh, are not going to be major market movers per se. Uh, I think that the big thing here with the market is that if we start to see the market break out of the 1345 region that I have drawn here in black on the S&P, uh, then we can easily rally uh, pretty much with no resistance to stop us up to 1380. So that's something to keep in mind, right? If we start to break down, we do have some support levels right below us where we could catch some buyers and stop it on the way down. So I'm not too concerned on the downside. I'd actually uh, be more concerned if I was a short trader and the market rallying too hard too fast. So put selling is really good right now. You can get pretty good premiums even though the VIX has been fairly low. I'll go over to the VIX right now. But the VIX has been fairly low. Um, it has seen a little bit of a spike up, and I call this a spike up recently, but it's only spiked up to just barely above 20. So uh, it's still okay. You can get good premium, but it's definitely better on, on the put side than on the call side. Calls are just way too close right now for any type of uh, call credit spreads or naked calls or anything like that. Uh, as far as Apple is concerned, I'll go over to Apple. Apple's pretty interesting today. Um, it opened up really really high of course right fairly good volume and not not the best volume we've seen on Apple on a earnings report but fairly good volume but it actually closed most of the gap that it had uh, after it opened you can see it is a white candle or black candle meaning that it did close higher than yesterday's close but it's filled in black because the opening and close were different it actually closed lower than it opened so generally it was higher but it closed lower than it's open if we actually go to the intraday chart of Apple, um, I think it's pretty interesting where we are right now. You can see we're just kind of floating right along this support level that it, it fell down to during the middle of the day. So we had a nice huge gap higher, but it fell to the support level and now it's been holding right at this support level. It doesn't seem like it really wants to go much lower, but it doesn't seem like it's going to go higher. The thing that I would watch if you're an Apple trader or have options on Apple, obviously, 
uh, it's just watch Apple possibly close this gap. If it starts to move even lower, then the next area of support is going to be right here where Apple actually topped out on the 19th just briefly. So that's going to be the next area of support. It could easily close this gap, make a close, come down very close near 380, and then continue to go higher from there. So there's obviously going to be some profit taking that took place today, right? And that's, I think, what we mostly saw is just a lot of people who were holding Apple, one, take profits right at the earnings, but uh, 99 times out of 100, these things will continue to move higher well after earnings. And I'll even go back to one of the bigger ones that, that continues to do this, and this is Netflix. Netflix is notorious for having a good earnings breakout and then moving higher afterwards. You can see all the way down here, right? Good earnings breakout, started to retrace just a little bit of profit taking and then took off right after that. Again, here, earnings broke out higher, a little bit of retracement, continued to break out more. So uh, Netflix is a really good one to look at. Um, again, here where it had earnings, a little bit of retracement for a couple days, a little bit of profit taking, not continuing on, and then continued that pattern uh, much later on in, in the in the month and cycle. So that's something to consider, to consider with Apple as you're starting to trade. So if you do have long positions, you can definitely enter them or exit those long positions and uh, take some profit, but you can re-enter it at a later time. You probably get a little bit better pricing in Apple in the next couple of days. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. As always, please email me with questions or comments and happy trading.